Good evening, Good evening. and welcome Hello. to Educate Our Youth. I'm your host, Janet Keith Thompson, the CEO and co-founder of the Mamie Keith and Aileen Bradley Educational Foundation, also known as Educate Our Youth. Our guest this afternoon is Mr. Dorme Nixon of the Nixon School of Masonry. The mission of Educate Our Youth is to make college more accessible through education, mentoring, personal development, and other means available to students by offering programs such as ACT and SAT workshops, college tours, and assistance with applying for financial aid, financial literacy, and academics and athletics. So let's welcome Mr. Nixon. Good evening, Domain. How are you today? I'm good. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. Beautiful afternoon. It is. So for our viewers, tell me, tell us a little bit about yourself. All right. I'm Domain Nixon. I live in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. I'm from Andrews, South Carolina, so I'm not too far away. Um, I have a wife. I have three kids. They're all girls. Okay. Um, Yes, my wife is a school teacher. Um, of course, I'm a brick mason and masonry educator. And um, I'm also um, started motivational speaking, talking to schools about ed masonry education. So that's my, my, <laughs> new, my new thing now. Oh, okay, great, great. So for our viewers, how much can a student expect to make? Um, I'm sorry, let me ask you this first. How long have you been in the masonry business? Um, I've been in the masonry business for 14 years, uh, self-employed, but doing masonry for 20 years. Um, okay. Out of masonry. So how did you get started in the field of masonry? Actually, uh, uh, my father's friend introduced me to the... Um, Pay scale is how I got um, interested in it. Um, I started off at school working for McDonald's, and with, with that idea, I wanted to own a franchise. But once I saw a paycheck of his, I quickly wanted to um, <laughs> move into masonry, masonry okay. field. Okay. I got I got attached to it by the artwork of it, and I'm great. I figured out I was great with my hands, so I continued. So why did you decide to open up a masonry school? Well, um, uh, this guy, I decided, I, I was thinking about it, about it for at least seven, eight years. Um, and the purpose and reasons for that is someone, um, another masonry company a uh, long time ago um, opened up a school for people that was interested in doing masonry. And um, me starting off in the masonry field as a laborer, working just as a labor, just giving materials to the Masons. Uh, maybe think about, man, I want to learn how to do this because I want the money they're making. So mm -hmm. the fast track of getting to that pay scale is going to learn. It was free for me because I was already working for his company. Okay. Yeah. So um, for years, um, I got better and better. And so um, two years after I started my business, which is in open up in 2005, two years after, um, I wanted to give opportunity to other folks. So I was trying to figure out a way to help others that had the same idea that I did out. I wanted, I wanted to learn. I, and okay. and um, so I started teaching some people um, directly um, from my business, but it started yeah. to become ex like very expensive. So uh, I started talking to educators and then um, let me see. I think about three years ago, uh, I talked to someone from Ori Tech that's a part of the um, workforce, I guess, uh, education part of it. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's how I figured out and learned how I could um, develop it um, through them. Okay. Yeah. Well, when I was in high school, which is a long, long, long time ago, um, they had masonry and carpentry, and you would see several uh, male students would take masonry up. Then later they went out to um, Conway. Uh, it was a. It's not. It's not have the academy. But it was a Conway Career Center. That's what it was. And they would teach masonry there and um, carpentry. Do you think masonry is becoming a lost art? 
masonry is becoming a lost art. Um, it's, it's less and less people down south getting into it. But up north, they have schools, masonry school. Okay. Um, yeah, they have them in up, up Virginia. They have some in New York. They have in California. They are a really big deal. So it's a lost, lost, a lost art down in the south, but not other places. Um, okay. It's, it's growing. So the people up there are coming here to take out, taking businesses, taking work. So do you... um. So how are you, how are you doing now? Are you offering classes now at this point, and how many? And so how many students? I mean, what are you doing to formulate your your school of masonry? Oh, right now we had to stop because of the COVID nineteen. I think because because okay. we attached with Ori Tech and South Carolina Works, uh, because of the COVID nineteen, we had to slow down the process. So we okay. kind of um, on a standby, wait for the Ori Tech to contact us back, which they already emailed us. Okay. Um, in the facts that you know there's a freeze on um hand on ha hands and hand because of it and um they plan on maybe next year to uh to open things back up for people to come in to take classes so when they open back up uh, we're gonna open back up so right now we have to stop with the housing industry the way it is um i i I would think that you need it, you know, because um, business is still booming when it comes to building homes. And um, you would think that, I mean, even if you don't do a brick house, they still have to do the foundations, which consists of mortar and, and stone. So I would think that that would, um, would have you back into the business as soon as possible because it has a house industry have a slowed up pretty much mm -hmm. even with, even with COVID. Yep, building has never stopped for our company. Mm -hmm. uh, it has not affected us at, at all. I, I, it actually picked up a lot more because because of it. I think I think people got more time at home right now, so they're thinking about spending more time at home. So they taking on recreational stuff like building fireplaces and fire pits. I've been doing that mm -hmm. the past couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. um, it's just the educational uh, platforms was the the biggest deal, and and, and it makes sense because. Um, Schools are getting effect, uh, affected because people are in closed buildings. Right. Um, working on the outside, we, we're wearing masks and we um taking advantage of the six feet rule. Okay. So, um, you know, working outside makes makes it different because you can stay away, away from people more. Right, right. Yeah. So what's a student, how much can a student make, can expect to make once they get trained? Um, and get a job in masonry. Oh wow, that's uh, that's a good question. Um, it's according to where you where you are, uh, and what company you work for. Okay. Uh, some companies pay f from twenty dollars to up to forty five dollars an hour. Oh okay. okay. You can make a lot of money in masonry, and not and not to mention if going through my school, I prepare for prepare them not to just become masons, but to uh, formulated an idea of owning their own business, you know, okay. uh, self-employment um, activities. Um, I teach them estimating, things like that. So I not just prepare them to become a mason, I teach them, I teach them how to become an entrepreneur. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. So what, what kind of support can, can, uh, can a student expect from, you know, from, from you as a trainer? Uh, say that one more time. What kind of support um, can one expect during the training process? Uh, elaborate on the question. So, uh, or how are you there to support them? If they come on as a training, um, as a student in your masonry training, what type of support do you have for them? Do you supply them with materials? Um, do you need transportation? That kind of things, those kind of things. Okay, yes, I, I try, I, I fully equip them with every tool they need to start as a brick mason. As far as transportation, um, I haven't figured that part out yet, but we're working on it. Okay. Um, we we uh, preferably a very new school. Uh, we just opened up um, this past August in 2019. So um, within that time, we end up with 19 students. Okay. Um, and um, I'm, three of them has taken advantage of it. It's, it's always that way. A handful, you always get, you know, I guess out of that 19, 
three are being successful, you know, they're taking okay. advantage of it. And okay. it does not cause it sometimes, you know how it is, 10 out you know. But um, the support they have, they have every tool they need to start. And we're going to work on the transportation next year for people oh, that okay. doesn't have uh, transportation. And so they don't have to worry about buying the materials that, you know, like the tools or any of that. You supply all of that for them. Yes, ma'am. Everything That's is right. funded through uh, Horry County's funding and SC okay. work funding. Okay. So what's the difference between your instructions versus another Mason Company instruction? Or training school, I'm sorry, instructions. Honestly, I don't know. Honestly, I don't know. Um, I take tidbits from um, watching some of their schools um, do some of their work on online. So okay. I, mim I mimic some of their ideas. Plus I mim mimic uh, the ideas from NCCER, which is the accredited um, education platform that certified me to teach. Um, so oh, okay. yeah, so I, as far as comparisons, I don't know. I don't know what all they are um, focusing on. I know that I am focused on the main basic things that's going to uh, make sure that they land a job and they do you know, a successful job uh, working for that new employer. Is all the classwork hands on? Or is there any online courses available to them or everything is hands on? No, 90% uh, is hands on, 10% is math, uh, reading, comprehension. Things. Okay. Okay. Um, so what type of impact Mixture has had on the business and the community development? What kind of impact? impact yeah. Has? I mean, how has the Mixture business uh, affected the, the, the community? Um, I mean, the, the building in the community, uh, as far as I'm seeing there, there's new homes being built. So you would say a community can survive? Can a community survive? Oh, yes. A community can definitely survive um, with Mason a part of the community. Yes. Okay. Okay. So when a student complete the class, how do they become certified? Um, well, they got to just mainly pass the course. Um, certification is... Well... Everybody, can, whoever completes the class gets a certificate. Okay. But uh, a certificate doesn't qualify you to do the job, if you know what I mean. Um, okay, I got you. You got what I'm saying? You know, it, it's like an engineer getting out of school, but they still have to ask the questions of the people that has 20 years of experience, mm -hmm. what to do. You know what I mean? But do they need the paperwork of a certificate? You know, like... If um, let's say you're going to be a licensed practical nurse, she has to take that test to show she has to have a license. So does this certificate sort of act like a license? I mean, will that help boost a job for someone that completes the masonry if they're certified? Oh, no, ma'am. No, oh, oh no, okay. Uh, no, no. Uh, the know-how, the knowledge uh, is going to get qualify you. Um, First thing a employer does is pitch out in the field and work with the guys. And when you work with the guys, your work will tell the story if you're good enough to stay on the crew. Oh, okay. So, you know what I mean? So it doesn't matter if that person has a master's degree or a doctorate degree in masonry. It, it, his work have to prove him that he can stay on the force workforce. Oh, I see. I see. So do you... Going to high schools, I know you said you affiliate with, with Orange Jones and Tech. So kids, students that will graduate from high school that's interested in masonry will enroll at Orange Jones and Tech. But do you communicate with the high schools to see if there's any student that um, might be interested, not interested in going to school, but want to become a masonry? Um, I was preparing myself to start talking to the school before this COVID-19. I started already. I okay. uh, went to Carver's Bay High School and talked okay. to the construction trades uh, students. Um, right, okay. Which, which was three periods of students. I went to Career Dairy in uh, 
um, up here in Myrtle Beach uh, at Burgess Middle Career Day to talk about construction and mainstream education. So I was on my way until uh, the COVID popped in. So uh, schedules been canceled and I couldn't get in uh, no other doors. And yeah, uh, that was my downfall, but that's okay. You know, um, it's, it's COVID is temporary. We uh, hopefully we praying for and um, that things would change next year and we can go out and talk to more people about um, equipping yourself with a secondary or even permanent um, career in construction in the construction field. I'm, I'm hoping it will be gone by next year, the end of the year. Um, it's really put a, COVID has put a damper on all our lives um, mm -hmm. somewhat, you know. Um, mm -hmm. So do you offer apprenticeships and, or have you heard of, are you part of Apprenticeship Carolina, which is through the technical college system? Uh, no, I haven't applied uh, for the apprenticeship programs yet. No, I okay. um, only, I, well, the people that was very interested and showed me that they're really interested, I hired them and then I okay. teach them. Some okay. have, um, I employed for quite a few years and they venture off, and, which was good. So I'm, I'm satisfied. Um, okay. So my goal was not to withhold information for them not to succeed. My my goal was to equip them and, and teach them all the knowledge they need to know how to succeed in mainstream, even if they stay with me or not. So that's what uh, a, a person to person should do, regardless. You know what I mean? Right. Right. But, yeah. Um, so uh, as far as apprenticeship, we haven't set aside a thing for that yet but we do hire and teach individuals from time to time. Okay, so do you have any, who are your partners in Ori and Georgetown County? Who's my partners? Have you, have you partnered with anyone? Uh, any no. organization in Ori and Georgetown uh, I mean, counties? Mm -mm. No, okay, okay. Okay, so you, it's not pretty much your, it's your baby, in other words. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um. So, and you say you do. You have hired some people. Does it matter? Um. If one has a, a felon. If, if you hire ex ex felons, or do you look at people? Um. They have to have a GED and not a high school diploma. Would you hire someone with a GED instead of a high school diploma? I hired him just to really <laughs> which is how God says it. Come as you are. Okay. Um, the construction field doesn't discriminate on the way you take care of your family. So yeah. it doesn't matter if that person, the ex-con, doesn't have a diploma, uh, barely can read. I think uh, the construction field is a, is a good place to start um, to create some good income to take care of your family. Yeah. Good income and, and, and good self-esteem, you know, because you're providing for your family. Right. And we provide a good mentorship. My guys are like, I like teachers. You okay. Know, uh, you know, like uh, I had the 71 year old uh, Mason. He still he works for me He's out in the field. Had a, and had a, had a 74. He, he just retired and, you know, just doing some pilling around the house. But my guys are educators. So they, they see a need in an individual. They always mentor and talking to us. So we, yeah, we, um, doing that well. And that's that's great though. That's what we need to do, especially within the black community. You know, yes, we need to work and lift each other up. You know, that's that's how we get ahead. Um, and that's why some of us are behind because we don't have, there are so many that don't have that philosophy as you do by bringing in people that you know is in need or seeing a man that needs to provide for his family. And if this is a way to help him, uh, I applaud you for that because there's so much that's needed within our community. So when you were having classes, uh, how many hours per week were your classes? There was eight hours a week. Eight, eight okay. Eight hours a week, four hours a class, two two times a day. Right, two uh, times a week. Two times, eight hours a day? Eight, no, eight hours that week. But uh, Oh, for the week, okay. Yeah, so four hours Monday, four hours Wednesday. Okay. Wednesday, yeah. But it's an 80-hour okay. course. 
So do you recommend a course for do-it-yourselfers? Say if I don't want to be, if I want to just learn how to do it, or my husband or someone, do you recommend that course for people oh, like yes, myself? Yes, ma'am, I do. I had several women uh, in my class. I had quite a few older guys wanted to take it just so they can do stuff around their own home. Yeah, yeah. So, yes, I recommend you do it. Okay, good. So, um, so you have. I'm looking. I'm wondering how many that your partners. You said you just it's just on you, but when you um like when you work in still Ori County Adult Ed, do you how does that go? Do you um work with them and getting adults from that education department? Oh yeah, let me tell you, um, Etta Carter, she quarterbacks Adult Ed. Mm -hmm. Actually, if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't be teaching uh, Masonry right now. Okay. Um, he self-propelled and made sure Ori Tech made a way for me to teach at her school. And and it allowed me to open up a business where I came from, which is Andrews, okay. to offer the opportunity for people uh, like me that was wandering the streets a little bit before I find my way. Okay. Well, that's good. That was a sweet person. You know, she's. Um, I had opportunity to work with her some years ago at Whittemo Park. She was vice principal there, so um, great personality. And she's she too was another one that don't mind reaching out to the community and yeah, helping pick them up. Yes, yeah, she is. So, um, so why should a student become? Uh, uh, I think you may have asked this answer this already, but uh, why would a student want to become a masonry? Um, do you, well, I, I can't answer this question. They have to figure out that on their own. Um, okay. Every man, every man and woman should choose their path. Um, I like masonry because I became good at it. I figured out I was good at it and, and great with my hands. Um, I only can say if a person is looking for something different and if you have a person around the way that's willing to teach you, I say take advantage of it. I'm local, right. I'm around the way. Um, I want to show people what I know. Um, and that counts because sometimes people get a little bit, I want to keep it to myself, but um, in a way, I want to make sure I'm giving that information away because there's this room for, for growth and there's room for other people to create income or be self-employed in this business. Great, yes it is. So tell the um, community how to reach you. If, if, if there's anyone interested in, in, in learning about um, your, your, school, your training program. Awesome, all right guys, listen up closely. I have a couple of different ways you can reach me. My first way is my cell phone. You can always call in and contact me. My number is 843-240-3033. It's on the screen. My website, my business is Nixon Masonry LLC.com is on the screen. Guys, please save. I'm also on Facebook, sometime talking and sharing pictures of work we've done. So it's Nixon Masonry LLC on Facebook. If you have any questions, message me or give me a call. I'll give you as much information as I need to help you make a good decision to see if masonry is something that you want to take further in your life. We are available to talk anytime. Sounds good. And if someone just wanted some you to do work, um, they could see, I mean, are you available or you have or you do have other workers that could go out and do the jobs for you? Yep, yeah, I'm available and yes, we do spread out and some guys can do what I know how to do, yes. Okay, great, great. Sounds good. Well, listen, it's been a pleasure talking with you this afternoon. You've mm -hmm. given us a lot of information, and I can't wait to the COVID's over so you can get back to training students in our area because it is a need for Masons, a big need. So um, congratulations to your success, and good Thank luck you. for the future. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. I enjoy this. You're quite welcome. Have a good evening. You too.